Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is season number two, episode number 26. My name is Keith. I am here with my good friend, Doug. Doug, first, how are you doing? Good. How's your week? Good. Yeah. Been a little busy. Uh, yeah. Took some time off for Labor Day. I know I've had some work things, family things. You've had the same. Yeah. We were going to stick to our regular schedule. We tried to do it on the weekends. It's just been bananas. Yes. It's been crazy. And then on top of that, uh, was one of the main events that we wanted to discuss, which will be my, our primary topic today. We're going to skip the Wired Nerdy News, and instead, we'll pick that up next time, we're going to just jump straight into our main topic, which is about Apple, right? Yeah. You've been wanting, you've been jonesing for this, haven't you? Yeah, you know, we talked about the Google Pixel reveal uh, just, what, a couple weeks ago, and I was looking forward to that. You know, it didn't really pique my interest uh, I wanted to switch to iPhone last year. I, I've been talking all year, all season about uh, I like their hardware, the batteries. And then this event came out and it really got me excited. You were kind of disappointed with the Google event versus this one. And yeah. we'll, we'll get into the impressions and all this here in a moment. Before we dive into that, there's one disclaimer I want to say. Our last episode, we did a preview of Star Wars, the new game that came out. And I don't know, have you seen anything about this? The Star Wars know. Outlaws? It sucks. Oh. It's horrible. Oh, my gosh. It's horrible. You need to check your Instagram. I sent you some videos. Uh, okay. Like, it's so bad. Like, it definitely was not, it should not have been released. It, uh, like, we're talking crazy stuff. Like, videos I've seen where the girl will be riding her bike, the character, and she's like, clips through and just falls all the way through the map. Not good. So bad. So we did a whole episode on that because it sounded so promising. But it's one of those things. It's why I try to wait on games oftentimes because you don't know if it's going to be half baked or not. And sometimes I, unless it's something I'm like absolutely for sure. Like if it's like a a Skyrim, I know I'm going to get bugs with it, but I know I'm going to love it eventually. Or Starfield is a great example. But those are the rare exceptions. Most of the time I'll wait a little bit see what people say is it stable is it good but i wanted to give that disclaimer because we spent our whole main topic talking about it and we didn't know it was in preview right yeah Uh, Yeah. but it's it's horrible so we do not recommend (laughs) just the videos i've seen it's off the rails and maybe ubisoft will fix it you know but yeah you gotta wonder um it maybe has a cyberpunk uh start uh there were a lot of complaints with cyberpunk and and it's excellent now they yeah. turned around and they fixed it. So maybe, maybe, yeah. but well, you know what? That's sad that that becomes the narrative is that we applaud companies for doing the right thing and making games good over time. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's nuts. Anyway, I want to get that disclaimer out of the way. We're going to jump into the yeah. event here. Let me get my screen share up. So we have it playing in the background. I've actually got the full blown event loaded up here. Oh, and this is what we're going to well, share just to play in the background. Yeah, yeah. Key moments, right? Let me go ahead and get that queued up here. Boom. Now, it started with, um, dare I say, a very interesting uh, intro. And it was people like exercising, dancing. And these are real life people that, uh, I guess, use their products. To re- like, And that's one thing Apple's really good about is they're they're very good about using actual customers, you know, in their thing. Uh, and they're very good about diversity and inclusion and showing that everybody, which honestly, it's really easy for Apple. Like how many people have Apple devices? It's not like, Oh, one demographic, so. right? Yep. So I'll skip ahead on this. Um, the first up, and I really like this at the bottom, they marked it for us, Doug. So we can do this in order. This is great. Oh, that'll be easy. Yes. So I'm gonna let you start off with this first half here. It was Apple watch, right? It, it's Apple watch 10. What did you think of yep. this? Uh, so they, uh, the way they reveal things, they kind of give it a slow, like it's playing now. It's build up. over of the watch is really good. Yeah. You know, for a guy that's never owned an Apple watch, I think it was impressive. But looking at some of the comments online, some of the reviewers that I kind of trust, kind of watch, they said, eh, it's a little bit better than a nine. But you got to understand from my point of view, coming from a Correct. Pixel watch to this is kind of mind-boggling, blowing. I mean, new design for me. I'm used to a circle-style watch. I'm going to a square-style watch and a whole bunch of other features. So that's fair. I was impressed. 
That's fair. And to me, so from my perspective, I've owned Apple Watch. My first one was a Series 3, and I had it forever. And now I have a Series 8. And I will say, I do agree. You have these moments where when they make these announcements, it's like it's either a, a big leap from one generation to the other, or it's not that big of a leap. And this one with Apple Watch is not that big of a leap. Uh, I will say, I I I love the ultra we've talked about this before but it's so expensive as a watch isn't like a thousand dollars or something like that yeah Uh, so the apple watch ultra and for those that don't know the apple watch ultra is releasing not a new apple watch ultra 3 it's a mouthful it's a apple watch ultra 2 in some matte black or it's beautiful color i love it it. it's beautiful it's here i got you right here uh ultra watch 2 it is so so good looking. uh, looking be warned that it's not really a new watch it's a new color with some new ai and features uh like that so yeah and they did that with a few other things that we'll talk about here now what's interesting to me with the appeal of the ultra watch to me is i'm no i'm not outdoorsy i'm not a super sporty person it's just to me it's it's got a bigger it's got a massive screen on it and it's ruggedized but the thing is they kind of miss the mark if they only pitch you see this guy standing in a park they only pitch this to cyclists swimmers iron man decathlons and i'm like i didn't to me i was like ah, i'm none of those things so i guess it's not for me from a marketing standpoint i don't know maybe that sounds stupid but i don't no, know i'm not I think out they clearly yeah. kind of focused on a uh, niche uh, clientele when they should have gave it a more broad uh, perspective of it. I, I think so too and you look at all these videos i mean it's people hiking like this is not me man i'm i'm a nerdy I do podcasts for God's sakes. This is this is as adventurous right. as I get. So, but I think the device is cool looking. I love that it's rugged eyes. Um, the black finish. You are. I was going to try to see if I can get to. It I think it's sharp. at the. I think it's at the tail. There it is. It's at the tail end. Uh, and they it. What was it? They interwove Kevlar and titanium into that band or something like that. It's like super. I, I think so. And it's got that uh, pretty secure clasp there. Yes. The clip. Yep. Yeah. I like. I like all of the design choices that, you know, that they've made with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's the black. There you go. You can see it. I think it looks sharp. I don't know. It does look good. Spending that much money for. So uh, uh, seven ninety nine for the Apple Watch Ultra 2. So Some kind of tech specs. It's a 49 millimeter uh, screen and it's uh, 61 grams in weight. I mean, it's a hefty little thing. But it's bigger so. screen. It's yeah. It's got. Yeah. Uh, I think it has extra stuff built into it for gps that's what it was it has special gps in it for when you're walking and all that but again it's cool looking i admire it but eh, a little too rich for my blood yeah so to go back uh that's the apple watch ultra 2 799 Mm -hmm. going back to the apple watch they've uh, made the two sizes a little bit bigger they did. And I've got the tech specs here. Let's see. I can't remember what how many millimeters they were at. Yeah, so I actually, uh, and I'll kind of reveal now, I have a Apple Watch 10 on order. Cool. I have a 46 millimeter. Mm-hmm. My uh, computer doesn't like me today. 46, because I thought 45 was the biggest they had before. Yeah, so, so it's this a 46 year they've uh, bumped it up from 45 to 46 on the large size. Sweet. And the small size, thank God it's working now, uh, yeah. went from uh, 41 to 42. Okay. So uh, the weight size. is uh, 35 grams with the GPS, 29 without. So it's uh, about 10 grams lighter than that Apple Watch Ultra. Yep. And of course, with each one of these things, like they're talking right now about sleep apnea, it can detect sleep apnea. Which So what's cool, what they're doing while this was a hardware event, running parallel to it is the software updates that's coming later this fall. Okay. And what I will say is I absolutely love this. They, If you already own Apple products, it wasn't all about the new stuff. They say, look, if you already own something, we're going to do a software update and you're going to get this new feature. And I like that because it incentivizes you to watch it because you're going to get something out of it because you're already an Apple user versus it only talking about you have to buy the new hardware. I love that their software. And this is one of the things I love about Apple. And I'm sorry, you can say it took Windows a long time to get there. Windows would always charge you for a new version if you wanted the new features. Apple was very good about their OS, when you're in the ecosystem, you get all the new features. If as long as you own the device, you're getting the features, you don't have to pay for them. They're very good about that. So, 
Yeah, the thing I also saw, the crash and fall detection, which I think yep. is already on your watch, yep. uh, sleep apnea, and then I believe they said in a future update, I could be wrong, atrial fibrillation. Yes. So if you have some uh, funky heartbeats going on, yep. it's going to give you a warning. You may want to go get that checked out or seek medical help. I think that's great. Yeah, they do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, mine has the oxygen sensor on it. So it tells you what your oxygen level is in your blood, which was a big deal during COVID. Uh, so, but anyway, all right, let's move on to the next thing. Um, I was surprised by this. It is a rendition, uh, 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 we'll say a new generation of just straight up AirPods, not AirPod Pro, the OG AirPods. Now there's two versions of it. There's just a straight up normal AirPod. And then there's one with active noise cancellation. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> you talk about a popular product. I mean, AirPods are everywhere. Uh, so I was really surprised that the, that they updated the baseline model. Um, I thought they was they were going to be all about you know the um, the pros. But what's really cool about this is th I'm showing it now is the software update for all of the health things for hearing. Where they're going to do a software update that if you have these AirPods or if you have AirPod Pro two, I think that's what you have. I know yeah. that's what I have, which is right here, always at my side. Um, Doug has a cool case, which uh, I want to buy one of those cases. A really cool game. It's on my yeah, Christmas list. So if you drop this case, your AirPods aren't going to go flying. Yeah, exactly. So uh, if you have these, you're going to get a software update to where you can do a hearing test. And Doug, I know this is near and dear to your heart because of your hearing loss. But Absolutely. These devices can become hearing aids. At clinical strength, it said. So this part I really focused in, you know, Keynotes are an hour, hour and a half long. They, you kind of get a little sidetracked, but this sucked me right in. So what it said is you'll essentially take the uh, AirPod on the side that you have. So my left side, I wear hearing aid. You'll put it in. They'll give you actually a hearing test, which is amazing. That's so so cool. whatever decibel you hear, that's what it's permanently going to be. So the software permanently sets your volume just in that uh, left uh, AirPod to that volume. That sounds awesome. That is so cool. And it did, yeah, you're right. Justice for movies, music. Yeah. What's so cool about it at a hundred, I think the, these are 179. That is so cheap compared to hearing aids. How much do hearing aids run? $4,000. Holy snikes. Are you serious? Yeah. I knew they were expensive. I thought you were going to yeah. say like 1200. So medical grade, the oh. last ones I bought, the first ones I bought four grand, the second ones I bought $2,000. Holy mackerel. For one. Now, I'm not saying that these will be as good as that. Uh, however, uh, oh, wait a minute. For one? So you have to spend $8,000? No, I can go on. This is another podcast, but I believe there's some medical billing. and I'm sure there is. It costs but... four grand. But yes, when I look at my bill, yeah. <laughs> well, I love the accessibility of this because they showed the lady and the son's giving a speech, couldn't hear, put the AirPods in. I love that people who may not have a, a lot of money to be able to afford that, this could be a great alternative for them. Um, I love what Apple's doing here. I think this is kudos. You don't see another company doing this. You don't see them leaning into the health uh, like they are. And so I think that's great. And the, and the really cool thing is that they're giving you all of this. I'll pause it there for a moment on that screen. They're giving you all of this if you already own the AirPod Pro uh, 2. Now, uh, the Super cool th yeah. they are and they did add USB C. Oh no, that's for their other headphones. Uh, that's what it is. Or does yours have USB C? Mine do. I believe the USB C is going to come to the lower price point. That's what it was. That's what it was. It's the coming AirPod to the Pod Fours and the and the the Ma the Max the big headphones. Are no, they're adding? I believe those are still like nope. Gave... Oh, nope, they're not. They're, they're not. Okay. Yep, that's I one of the announcements. That. So the two things for the big over the ears, which I've never used them. I, I was so close to buying a pair, but every a lot of people told me they squeeze your head a lot. They're not super comfortable. And I'm picky on over the ear things. But um, the announcement for those, which we won't spend much time on because we have so much to talk about, new colors and USB-C. That's what they did for those. Now, the one gripe I've heard about that is all these new AirPods, the little ones, mm -hmm. are getting an Apple H2 chip, where this yep. one is still keeping that old H1 chip that yeah. was in the last generation. Yeah, but so you know what? People it are upset about that. The chip doesn't matter as much. That it, I mean, that, that impacts how quickly it, it syncs up and switches, but I don't think that's 
that's that big of a deal. And then the other complaint, which I agree, is there's no external power button on those big headsets. Yeah, that's true. That is true. So. And the cases are weird. They're like a purse. You have to hold, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's really on. All right, let's move on to the the biggins here. Uh, yeah. So we talked about the the maxes. Let's see if that later on. Yeah, let's go through. Let's jump to the big one here. iPhone. So exciting. The uh, whole event was called uh, Glow Time. And if uh, you don't know or you haven't got to see it, Glow Time is when you're asking Siri, which uh, – and you may have heard it. I may not have. They didn't mention chat GPT specifically. They did. Oh, they did. Okay. They did. I, then yep. I missed it. Yep. So they're calling it Apple Intelligence mixed mm-hmm. with Siri, and it's going to do all kinds of stuff on yep. your iPhone. You watched this. missed that part. You watched this the day of. I watched it last night because I had a okay. late night working, and I ended up – we knew we were going to do the podcast, so I watched it. It was fresh in my mind. Uh, they did. At the very okay. tail end of okay. the keynote, they did a whole section where they basically recapped – all of the intelligence stuff that they talked about last May. And he mentioned it again, that GPT is coming okay, for external. Yeah. yeah, it can do, it'll have on device learning language models for faster responses for common things like math and that kind of stuff. But it can tap into external learning models. And he mentions chat GPT by name. Good. Okay. Yep. So, uh, so, you know, more of the same. I will say this, what I loved about the 16, what they did here, the iPhone 16, I always say it. One thing that the Android devices have always done better is pushing out the screen to where there's no bezel, like edge to edge screen. Mm-hmm. Samsung and the, oh man, those phones are beautiful. They're getting there finally. You can see the edge is getting less and less and less on these. That's my one thing about Apple I've never really liked is they never have embraced edge to edge screens, but this is the closest that they've ever gotten. Yeah, I mean, uh, looking at it now on the screen here, for those uh, listening, uh, those watching can look super close to the screen. Uh, the big addition this time, action button. Does yours have an action button? does not. I have an iPhone right now. Okay. I have an iPhone 13, and it does not. It only has a Siri button and the volume buttons. The action button is programmable. Yep. Uh, now, did you catch, is the action button the same as the photo button? It is not. So that's what I was going to say. The action button, I think, was limited last time to the 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max. Yes. It is going to all of the uh, iPhone 16 line, the 16 Pro Max and Plus. So the camera button is separate from the app? I didn't catch that. I'm looking at it now. I see it. uh, I know you watched the event, but it's amazing. So it's going to be haptic. It's huh. going to be tactile. I'm using yeah. big words, but no, you're right. you know when you use a handheld camera, you kind of slowly push to mm-hmm. focus, and then you hard push to take yep. the photo. The DSLR is that way. Yeah, It's going to do that on the iPhone. That's freaking awesome, actually. But I didn't I didn't see. More. I missed that part. <laughs> so it's, uh, included in uh, pushing the button a uh, little bit and then all the way, you can slide it back and forth to change options. You it's can like slide touch, it back right? and forth to uh, zoom in, zoom out. It's going to be pretty wild yeah. pretty good for camera control yeah that, that's awesome yeah see i i must have missed that for some reason because i don't have an action button and it was grilled so the new i assumed the action button was the photo button when i was watching it i didn't put two together that they've added yet another button another to button i did not catch that hopefully the uh iphone 20 we don't have like 30 buttons on the There's side gonna be 50 buttons button. and can you imagine what that camera's gonna look like by the way here's the part i skipped ahead here uh to where they recapped all of intelligence with the update that's coming. And this is where they talked about ChatGPT. So this was the whole section here. But none of this was new information. He essentially did a Cliff Notes quick version okay. yep. of what they already talked about back in May. Um, so it was kind of good to hear again. Um, and it's neat that this whole section here was not focused only on the hardware. It was the software updates that's coming with iOS 18. Oh, did you? I forgot, by the way, I was going to ask you about it. You can make your own emojis. Did you know that? I did not. Uh, you know, uh, with the Android, I have just the regular emojis, smiley face stuff. I don't have anything, I guess, cool like that. It's gonna well, be exciting. they're going to add it. I, I, we don't have it yet either. But Oh, okay. But the idea is, like, if I text you, like the example they gave, they said, you know, alligator wearing uh, a funny hat or alligator yeah. wearing a cowboy hat. And it made the it cartoony cool little emoji with the alligator like oh, nice. can you imagine what people are going to create 
That's going to be stupid. <laughs> Hopefully they have some filters on there. I know. Well, knowing Apple, they probably will. Uh, but they had that. But then um, they also have it tied into DALI, which DALI is the diffusion engine that ChatGPT uses for image creation. So it isn't just making little emojis. It can make full-blown photos. And what I like is this video here. They show the girl when she's talking. It it understands your mess ups. She starts to say, you know, Siri, tell me about the uh, building of, and then she stops. And then she's like, Oh wait, I mean the museum of art. And it just doesn't skip a beat and it understands her. Well, like today, like it's so funny. I get so frustrated with Siri because like, what was it just the other day? I asked her something so simple. Like what is the difference between my town and this town? And she pops up and she's like, such and such is the town located in this state. And I'm like, I know what's the distance, and he said, "I do not know. I'll have to do an internet search." And I'm like, "Oh, my God. it's so bad." <laughs> so, I'm excited about uh, it, it. It becoming contextual because that's what they're showing now is that it will know the content on your phone. Like, I can say, "Show me a picture of Doug at Comic Con," and it should yeah. just bring it up. Now, people have privacy concerns about that, but you know, Apple's pretty good about. It their privacy stuff now one of the cool things i saw on here as well is when we get this uh, siri chat gpt upgrade if you somewhere in your files and your pictures and your emails have say a concert ticket you'll say hey siri yeah. please locate my concert ticket and it'll pop it right up i love that too it's going to be you know, yeah. going to a concert going somewhere it's all e-tickets now and you're sitting in line with thousands of people scrambling to get this yeah. barcode for the guy that scans. So, yep. Or getting on a plane. Now yeah. they do. Ha they do have Apple Wallet, which if you double tap the button on the side, it'll bring up your wallet, and you can have your airline ticket in it. But oh. you're right. If you if you didn't do that, you could just tell you know who. I keep saying her name. She keeps activating on my my phone oh, here. Yeah. Uh, so if you say it, then you know it'll activate, and you say just find my airplane ticket, which is pretty cool. That'll be really handy. It is. So I'm, you know, I'm glad that they spent time on the actual software bit, because I think this is a huge part of the selling point of the phone itself. Yeah. They've really wrapped the entire event around what they're calling Apple intelligence. Yeah. So I'm glad to see, yes, we're getting new hardware, but this is all the things that new hardware is going to be able to do for you. That is true. It was, it's, it's a nice pairing with it. Um, this was an interesting thing that they were showing where the guy takes out his phone and he sees a restaurant and he takes a picture of the restaurant. No. And it, I, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. I was it, just going to say, uh, we've stolen from Apple. Apple steals from us. It, you guys have had the Google that Google did that first. It's called Google lens. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And so it's funny that that's what it, it, what's cool about this one, though. He takes a picture of a concert and doesn't it create it actually creates a calendar invite. He says to it, he takes a picture of the poster of a concert and it has the date on it. And he says, hey, I want to go to this. And it creates yeah. a calendar reminder for him. Now, I've used Google Lens before. It's uh, questionable. This looks like and if it, we get the same functionality, it does way more when you take a photo. Yeah, we'll see. We'll find out. Now, if it is powered by ChatGPT because they showed him taking a picture of a dog and trying to find out what the breed is of the dog, I can tell you this. Having the GPT app on my phone, I have used it so many times where, and it's creepy how good it is, where I'll take a picture of something, I upload it into GPT, and I'll say, what is the model of this? Find me this part. Um, what kind of bug is this? Uh, all the And it is crazy good yeah. at, at doing it. And they're, they're showing that all the stuff they're showing GPT does today, which tells me that that's probably what they're sending the data out to with their agreement and back, because all of that they're showing today does it today when GPT and it does it pretty well. Very nice. So I'm confident it's going to be pretty good. Now, yeah. if they said, you know, we made our own AI, I'd be like, eh, prove it to me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, they're going outside, they're getting chat GPT this, reliable already tested uh millions of users i'm sure company to join them so yeah and it's funny microsoft did the same thing there i mean copilot is microsoft's thing for windows and it's basically gpt the only real hardcore competitor is google has their own and well elon musk has grok um i but, haven't heard of grok uh, yeah now, google has what's called gemini well but there's a controversy with grok though 
they did not, they as in Elon Musk's company, this should not surprise anybody, they didn't put controls on it. So people are making uh, sexually explicit uh, photos where they'll say, I want Doug naked riding a pig. And it'll like, yeah, I'm, I'm not joking. And yeah. it's becoming a problem on Twitter, on X, excuse me, because people are making bad derogatory images with rock because it, it has, it basically has no ethics. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Mm-hmm. And it's really disturbing photos. Uh, and in, in where they drew the line, they got in trouble because people were making child pornography with the AI. So it was a big deal. It blew up not too long ago. And, and they had to obviously pull that back. And I'm just thinking like, come on, you got to be responsible Absolutely. Level with this. So anyway, so yes, Grok exists. Uh, I don't know how good it is compared to these other things. It, it does do a lot of these kinds of things, but um you know, it's one of those things that controls that are in place. I see what you mean now. The time with that button having haptics. Sorry. I, it's like a squirrel. <laughs> no, <laughs> squirrel. you're good. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What else was there about the 16? They, a lot of photo stuff. You're worried about photos. Let's talk about that for a moment. I, I was. Uh, going into this, you know, I have a Pixel 8 Pro. It is really known for taking amazing photos, and it has a macro mode. Mm-hmm. So I'm watching this event, and then I hear, boom, we're getting a 48 megapixel camera on the uh, iPhone base and the Plus, plus a, uh, not Plus, but uh, in addition, you also get a 2X telephoto lens. And then for their Vision Pro, they're doing those two side-by-side cameras. They're going to be vertical, but that's to take spatial video. Spatial video, yeah, for 3D. Kind of a 3D video for that Vision Pro they have. Yeah, which is kind of cool, yeah. So I thought, mm, I, I need a little bit more than that. So we get to the iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max. Then they talk about uh, 48 megapixel ultra wide, mm-hmm. 5FX telephoto, 48 megapixel fusion camera. And you might have to help me because when they said fusion camera, I didn't know what the fusion part was. Yeah. So part of the fusion camera is it fuses the photo together. You'll remember okay. they'll show an image and it's all these layers, right? What they do that's unique is when it takes a photo, all of the lenses together are taking uh, their own image and then it layers them. And that fusion photo allows them to then merge them together. Now, what's cool about that is how you can do depth of field. So if you take a photo of somebody and you want to blur the background, you can take your finger and you can actually blur the background to make them in focus. And that fusion lens allows you to have that kind of a control. Typically, on a normal camera, if you if you had like a telephoto lens, you would have to actually dial it in to blur the background and get them in focus and do it before you took the photo. This allows you to do it after the fact because what it's doing is it's taking actual multiple layers of photos and then it allows you to manipulate them in post uh, oh. for post editing. So that's what they mean by that. Yeah, they said that a couple of times and I, uh, if they explained it, I missed it. So yeah. that really caught my attention. And then macro mode. So they haven't had macro mode before for those that don't know. And tell me if I explain this wrong. It is the uh, process of getting really close on something and getting such fine detail. That's new. And I use that on the Pixel 8 Pro, not a lot, but I like to get in close. I've got Right now, some lizards on my front porch or some little gecko things. I'd zoom in on those. Yeah. So I have, to wrap that all up, I'm rambling, but I'm really excited for the cameras on the new iPhone. So. Yeah, I think your biggest, in hearing you make this decision, your biggest complaint or concern is the camera. And, and I will say, hands fast. down, there's there are great cameras on, on all of the Android devices. They do a very, very good job on that. They They compete very well in that space. However, I will say... The Pro model, which is, you know, the one I have here with all the cameras on it, it it is known for the camera. Like, people buy this because they're photographers. And there are many, many pro photographers that have replaced their DSLR with these Max phones. Oh, I did not know that. The, yes, it's very common. And they actually did a whole thing where now it is video, where there's people shooting movies on these things. And they did a whole thing where they had, I think it was the weekend uh, music artist had a video done all shot on uh, a pro max. So I think you'll be happy with it. It makes, it does take very, very good pictures. Yeah. That's kind of the last holdout for me was the picture quality. I'm usually the photographer for all the family vacations and stuff, you know, cause I've had a pixel mm-hmm. and the pixels just uh, deliver such an amazing photo in the end. Yeah. 
Now I do like they're talking. I forgot about this. Uh, talking about the AI and the screen being bigger, so you can have more lines on it. But the AI can do all kinds of stuff with like correcting your grammar and you know all those kinds of fun things, kind of like Grammarly. But so in all of this, where did you land? So you hold off on telling me your overall impressions. But okay. Did you decide to buy an iPhone? You I said did. you had a you have a watch. Which iPhone did you go with? Because I was wondering when I was watching. Did you do Pro? I assumed you did because of the camera, or did you do regular? So I went. Or, or what are you going to do? Because I know you can't order yet. So the, the pre-order for those uh, kind of getting excited, maybe thinking is Friday morning, seven a.m. Central Time. Uh, the thing that uh, you told me, I believe, is you can kind of preload your cart, pre-authorize your credit card to hopefully get that order in. Because I'm sure millions of people are going to do it. But uh, I selected the uh, iPhone 16 Pro Max. It has 256 gigs uh, base storage. I didn't need anything higher than that. I think they have uh, 5, 12, and 1 terabyte. I no. never, since I've ever owned any Apple product. Oh, I you say no to no, 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 no. You did good because okay. here's the thing I'll tell you. I haven't been in the Apple ecosystem for, oh, God, 13 years, 15 years now. I don't care if it's a an iPhone, an iPad, watch, what I always do the lowest tier storage. Now, yeah. being a PC guy also, that sounds insane, right? Because if I were to be a P, right now, if I'm going to tell you to buy a Windows laptop, gig, I'm like, that's... dude, you need like a four terabyte. Yeah. <laughs> so for this, it's different. You don't need that much. And now there are some situations. If you were doing like a lot of video capturing, like you're a videographer, I, it would be different. There's certain scenarios I would recommend it. But it's for most people, no. As long as you are backing up your photos to a cloud on a regular basis, the apps are not that big. Like even if you, I have so many apps on the phone. I just went through my phone and cleaned up some apps. I never, ever even come close to the storage. So you were smart to just, Stay on the low end. Okay. Now, if you load it up with a bunch of video games, maybe there are things that can take up space, but I've never had that problem, man. And I'm a pretty, pretty heavy user for my iPad and everything. So, now, man, I always go with the lowest storage. Good. Good. Yeah. I, it's crazy. I, I barely, I'll use half in its lifetime if I'm lucky. So, you did, you did wise on that. So, but you went with the Pro, right? Or you're going to go with the Pro. Is uh, what you want to do. Yeah. So, uh, the Pro and the Pro Max, I believe, have pretty similar specs. They do, but I just the screen with, size. That's all. Yeah, so I went with the Pro Max because I have the Pixel 8 Pro, and I believe I'm going to go a tenth or two tenths bigger in size, so not yeah. that much difference. Yeah. yeah, I think you'll like it. And uh, I've ridden this way before. I can tell you how this maps out. So even if you get your pre-order in on September 13th, yep. you'll there's a strong chance you may not get it until like the first or second week of October. That's okay. typically how it goes. Um, now I'm going to be patient this year. But even if, even if, um, so where I'm, where I'm, at, I haven't made my mind up of what I'm going to do. My phone is a 13. I'm just kind of like, eh, I don't know. But we always do this round robin thing with the kids. If I get one, then everything shifts and it goes hand me downs, right? Yeah. So, and where I'm at is I have two phones. I did finance zero percent through the cell company, and two phones are about to drop off and be paid off, but they'll be paid off in October. I'm going to decide what I'm going to do in October um, because basically if I get a phone, it's just going to, you know, it's just going to replace what I was already paying if mm -hmm. I do it that way. Otherwise, there's the deal with Apple where you can 0% finance with a card for 24 months or something like that, wasn't it? So Yeah, and that's what I did. I got an Apple card just to get this zero interest payment. I I know we talked already. I didn't want to really lock myself into a I don't blame you. cell phone well, contract. And I thought about doing the same thing, just like paying it outright too. So that 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 is kind of handy. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do. But my point is, even if there's a run on these and everybody wants one, by the time Thanksgiving rolls around, pretty much anybody could order one and get it within like a week. Yeah. So they do very good typically with their, um, you know, their inventory and the way that they do for their shipping. Uh, so you, you're, you're going to go for this. You already pre-ordered. You already have AirPods. You already have an iPad. You pre-ordered the watch 10, right? And then you're yep, going to shoot I got for the 46 per, millimeter. Yeah. Cool. And then you're going to yep. shoot for, so you're going to have all kinds of fun stuff to, to play with. Yeah. 
that'll be good. Yeah. So now it's just uh, getting that iPhone order in on uh, Friday and then kind of sitting back and waiting for everything to ship in and get here. And... So given all of this, like, what is your, what's your take? Oh, I do want to, before I ask you that, I want to, there's one thing I saw right before our, um, we started this podcast. I was flipping around uh, out there and they just had it up there. A lot of people are not talking about this. There it is. I'm going to pause this. Okay. Here's the summary screen of everything on the pro. And most people miss this. What do you see right here? Up at the top, uh, right. Top right is I have to blow my screen up. Yeah. Oh, it's really tiny. I'll just tell you if you want the latest generation ceramic shield. Right next to that. Oh, Wi-Fi 7. Do you know what that means? It's a new... Uh, so I've got Wi-Fi 6. I didn't even know 7 was out. That's why people didn't... No one's talking about it, and they should. Because that's a big deal. Because Wi-Fi 7 is not. So this device will be Wi-Fi 7 enabled, which is mind-blowing. Now, if you've ever seen the stuff on Wi-Fi 7, Wi-Fi 6 was able to get, like, you know, close to 800 down. Wi-Fi 7 is... One to one point five. Oh my god! Yeah, gig down. Like, yeah, it's so. It's funny because a lot of people aren't talking about it. This will be one of the first Wi-Fi seven enabled devices. Well, and that's good on Apple for planning for longevity Future. of this device. Yeah, that's right. So I do want to call that out. So now, given all of this and what we've talked about, we we'll see if you don't. Hopefully, everybody he doesn't return things. We'll see that we went through this last year. We'll find out. Be patient this year. Uh, What was your opinion of the event? You know, I know you're vested now. You're interested in it. I get it. You're you're excited. But overall, how did you feel as a newbie looking at this event versus looking at the Google one that we just had? You know, I'll start with the Google event because that came first. I went into the Google event thinking, okay, something's going to wow me to say I'm not ready for an iPhone. But I went into it. And I mean, it wasn't much, you know, the uh, Pixel 9 Pro, these names are getting so long. And then the Pixel 9 Pro Fold, I've wanted a foldable. It's still way too high. I think it was seventeen ninety nine. I just can't do that. That's so high. I mean, the uh, Pro Max I just ordered or I'm going to order is eleven ninety nine. But that's getting up there to where I can't do it. But mm-hmm. going into the Pixel event, I'm thinking, okay, something in here is going to tell me to stop, uh, stay with them, but it didn't. You know, I was trying to be optimistic. Uh, so come, uh, here comes the Apple event, all of the uh, chat GPT enabled Apple intelligence, the watch. I've always wanted Apple watch. I've heard so many good things. And the Pixel watches have kind of been limited as to what they can do. I know they're getting better. But I've always been uh, envious of uh, people with uh, Apple Watches because they're like, hey, I can do this. I can do that. So that really got my attention at the front. And then moving on to the AirPod Pro 2, which I have, that whole uh, medical with the hearing, that blew my mind. To me, if I – because right now, not that I'm rambling, sorry – Right now, if I listen to music, I only use a right earbud because I have to have that hearing aid. I won't be able to hear anybody at all. So if I can enjoy music, enjoy movies, talk to people on the phone, but still be able to hear people in front of me, that is a game changer. That will be amazing for me. So that really blew my mind. And then on to the iPhone. You know, my last iPhone 4, I'm iPhone was an iPhone 4. I'm a dinosaur. So to go from the iPhone 4 uh, and my antenna gate, you know, don't hold the sides of the metal phone. They were bad, yeah. To the iPhone 16. So to kind of wrap it all up, I'm rambling, I apologize. But it really grabbed my attention and grabbed me and said, hey, now is the time to switch. Now is the time that some medical things are happening, some really cool chat GPT and AI things are happening. So it overall, the Apple event just grabbed me harder than the Pixel event to wrap it up. So. That's fair. My assessment will be a lot shorter, mainly because I'm not the newbie to this, but I'll, yeah. I'll say this. Number one, to be fair to Google, Apple will have good years and bad years on their events. Sometimes I watch them and I'm like, eh, not much changed. But number two, and I think this is the case with this, one area where they always outpace the competition is in their software innovation. Their apps, they, they are, they're good because of their apps. 
So, and you can see that with iOS and the way that, you know, they're doing all their stuff. So that's, that's a big one. Number three, I am interested to see how this evolution goes for you and your opinion of it, because I do think you're, and I've warned you about this. You're used to a level of freedom. It's a bit of the wild, wild west with the Android. You have more control. You can do more things, right? Apple is a gated community. Now, there's a trade-off to that. That means it'll be super stable. It'll last a lot longer. You get a higher build quality. You'll get awesome software. But they kind of get you in a little bit, you know? And so I'm interested to see what how your perspective will evolve. To me, that's super valuable. I love being gated in. It's safer. It's more cyber safe. My data is safer. They're big on privacy. My watch just works and has awesome battery life. I, I just I want these personal things in my life to be reliable because I don't want to fix them. That's to me. That's why I'm, I am big on Apple for my personal devices. Now keep in mind, I have every other device under the sun as well because you know I'm a big nerd. But when it comes to the devices I rely on, those are the trade offs. Now I can't. You know, with your phone, you could easily jailbreak the thing and do all kinds of crazy cool stuff. You could turn it into a flipper to zero if you want and start hacking things. You can't do that with an iPhone. You can jailbreak an iPhone, but you can't do nearly as much. They are more locked down. I'm curious to see how this evolution will go for you. And But overall, good event. I'm looking forward to seeing how you plunging into this ecosystem is going to go for you and how your perspective uh, will evolve. Yeah, just to kind of wrap it up, I won't take too much time. I think the past uh, Android life I've had has kind of scarred me, you know, bad battery life. I've had to get an Android phone every one to two years, really, because I noticed problems. Uh, I just got hacked uh, last week or something happened. Oh, that's right. Phone. You I, did have that event. I had that was to totally weird. reset it. So <laughs> I kind of want to move away from the hackable virus, maybe late in. Android you're not world. You're not going to have that problem on this, man. That's the yeah. last of your concern. I've never had that issue. So all the pieces have been falling into place in the last year, two years, last week, resetting my phone, which annoyed me highly, to uh, go to a totally new operating system. That's a, that's a very fair point. Um, I think you're going to like it. I think it's worthwhile. Um, and I think it was a good event. I'm interested in seeing what your impressions are once you get it. Um, I think you got a lot to learn, but the funny thing is you're entering at a time. We're all going to have a lot to learn because it looks like iOS 18. Yep. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be a big change for all of us, you know, even with the end of the stuff they're adding with the intelligence. So it's funny. You're entering at a time where all of us, even those, uh, those of us that are used to using Apple products, we're going to have to learn too. Uh, so it, it'll be good though, but overall great event. I know you've been looking forward to it. You've been dying to do this on the episode. So this was our main topic and I, I think it was a good one. So. Hold tight, everybody. Let's see what Dougie thinks of his new stuff. And I'm looking forward to those stupid green bubbles going away. <laughs> I'm finally uh, joining. Uh, except when we text our friend Matt. Uh, I roll. Uh, we got to get him on board now. I know. There you go. Well, well, you, now you can make fun of him, just like we made fun of you all these years. He can join That's in on the fun. <laughs> I've got a lot of apologies to make on Facebook, too, if I get this. Do you really? What'd you do? do you just, were you, a, you know, an Android fanboy? Like, iPhone, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I've never slammed Android because I always say it is that it it does, you know, it does fit a really good purpose, and it's a great yeah. phone for a lot of people. It's just not it's not for me. And and I've and I owned an Android. I was on Android for quite a while, and I I still even mess with Android devices in my career, and I have an appreciation for them. Yep. They're just not for me. But so I'm careful not to slam them. Now, in my earlier days, when I first got an IT, I hated Apple. Oh, I hated it. It was pre Mac OS 10, though. So I want to be clear. Mac OS 9 before, garbage, junk. Ugh. They had a cool design with the the iMac. Remember the multicolored ones with the handle? That was oh, cool. Yeah. Absolutely. But you'll curse yourself when you had to work on one to put memory in the stupid thing. Oh, so I bet. it was yeah. horrible. Yeah. And they always put Apple's was real big about back then, especially they put tamper resistant screws. So you had to bring it to them to work on. So you'd have to drill, yeah. drill them out. Yeah. Apple did some dumb things. I hated Apple. I would loathe them. So it's kind of weird now to hear me I'm like, oh, they're going to, but they have evolved. I will give them credit. Like you said, at one point they said they'll never have a stylus and now they have the Apple pencil. So, right. All right, man. I think that wraps it up. This is a good episode. Appreciate it. Hopefully we didn't bore everybody with all of this uh, yeah, device so. talk. It'd be good. And we'll be back normally scheduled time, hopefully, uh, with our normal formatting 
Anything I'm forgetting? Close it out for us. Uh, no, you know, uh, we just want to thank everybody for tuning in uh, week to week and maybe every two weeks. Uh, we're doing this uh, as fast as we can for you, but we do have some conflicts with work and family. Uh, as you've seen with this episode and episodes in the past, this is really our passion. This is the things we love. I'm learning things on the podcast. I know you're learning things. I'm uh, exploring new areas I've never looked at before. So it's really been a treat to do this. And we want to thank all of our listeners. We want to thank those who support us. And supporting us, uh, we don't ask for a lot of money, but there's a store out there. It's getting cold. We got some hoodies and shirts and uh, some beanies, coffee cups. All that does is uh, keep the lights on and keeps us talking about the passion we love and uh, giving it to you. Yeah. Getting awesome, man. Thank you, everyone. You have a great week, and we will catch you on the next round. Take care. See ya.